Welcome to the Developmental Training Academy webinar. This is the second in our project management introduction series and this is focusing on the PERT chart which is a flow chart and the critical path. My name is Tracy Abel. I'm the general manager here at Developmental and I'll be working through this program. So the first thing we need to do is use our goal for our project to establish our task. So we've selected a basic goal here for a very small project. So we're going to build a chicken coop which is at least 1.5 metres in length from a prefabricated kit that costs under $200 by a particular date, the 30th of something, 2000 and something. So the first thing we do is we brainstorm all the things that we think we need to do to achieve this project. It's useful to do this in a team because then really useful ideas aren't missed. However, you can certainly do it on your own. Come up with a list of everything that you want to do. There's three rules here for brainstorming. The first one is don't evaluate, just list the ideas. The second one is don't put the ideas in any particular order. And the third one is to use post-it notes so that you can rearrange the ideas later. So once you've brainstormed a list, you need to evaluate your ideas. Work out what's good, what's bad, and what is actually a possibility in the future. So we tend to separate it into three categories, ideas to retain, ideas to park for later, and ideas to remove altogether. We then re organize the post-it notes and fit them into those three categorizations. So if we're looking at our chicken coop example. We've got a range of ideas there in yellow to retain, a number that we're going to park to later such as buy some chicks, mow the lawn and so on, and a number that we've decided to remove such as getting the kids to help build that particular chicken coop. From there you put the ideas into some sort of order, much like a flow chart. So take all the ideas you're going to retain that were in the retain column and move them around until you have a flow chart. You'll notice that this one here has some ideas that are actually occurring at the same time. This is just an example. So if we have a look at our chicken coop, we've got all of our ideas in order. We'll start with talking to our client who's probably our husband or wife to work out the requirements, perhaps our kids, select the area of the yard, work out the size and so on, till we get through to actually purchasing and picking up our chicken coop from the supplier, setting it out, reading the instructions, which of course we all do before we get started, building it, cleaning up the area and then getting final approval from the kids or our wife or whatever client we're doing this for. This is what we call a PERT chart. It's a very simple version of a PERT chart, generally called a Program Evaluation Review Technique, P-E-R-T, that's where it comes from. Sometimes program is substituted with project, Project Evaluation Review Technique. Notice that there's arrows all the way through linking one thing to the next. Okay, so there's four rules with a PERT chart. The first one, you can have both parallel and series sections. Now a parallel section is when you have multiple activities occurring at the same time. This is used for shortening a schedule on a project or crashing a project if you want to get technical about it. The other sections are what we call series. This is when one thing happens after the next. And the beginning and the end of this example project are both series per chart sections. The second rule is to take care not to leave tasks hanging. All tasks must have an arrow in or an arrow out. So you can see as indicated here that this task in the middle there has no arrow leading on. So effectively you get to this point and you have to stop. There's nothing further that you can do because it leads to nothing. Ideally you'd have an arrow leading on to that next idea there. The only tasks that don't have an arrow in or out um, the same as is suggested in that rule is the start and finish task. The start will have an arrow out but not in, the finish will have an arrow into it but not out of it. The third rule, a circular pathway should never be included. This is called a looping error. 
Now if we have a look at this project, we start off fine, we go start to idea that series and then we go into two parallel sections, idea to idea, but then that goes to that idea at the bottom and that leads back towards the idea at the front and what you end up is a loop that is very difficult to get out of. So that is what's called a looping error and that's a real problem on a project because people get stuck and can't move on to the next task effectively. Rule number four, a PERT chart should never include time frames. So our basic PERT chart here for our chicken coop is just ideas. It doesn't actually have any time frames included on it. So rule number five for a PERT chart, this is the bonus rule, a PERT chart always follows the project life cycle. So if you've had a look at our first webinar, you'll know the project life cycle tends to move through four phases. Concept which is where you work out the parameters, planning where you put the structure in place for how you're going to run your project, execution is actually completing the project and finalisation is tidying up, writing reports and finalising everything at the end of that project. The PER chart follows that structure. You may find that the concept planning and execution cycles are repeated again and again on extremely large projects but it will always follow that process. Okay. The next thing is to establish what's called a critical path. This is where time frames are added to the PERT chart to work out the critical path. It's taking it to the next step. But what actually is a critical path? Many people get a little bit confused with this, thinking that it's the most important pathway on a project. And that's not actually the right definition for it. The critical path, you can see on the right here, is the pathway within a project where if delayed the entire project will be delayed. And there's two things that are different from a PERT chart to a critical path diagram. The first one is that tasks have been numbered. Each task there has a number 1.1, 1.2, 2.1 and we'll explain how to do that shortly. And the second is that time frames have been added 1 hour 30 minutes 45 minutes. So if you have a quick look at this there's a big black line across the middle and that's what we call the critical path. Let's work through this process. So the first thing we need to do is number our tasks and that requires us to divide our project into stages. There could be three, there could be ten, there could be a hundred stages depending on the size of your particular project. Our little chicken coop project has been divided into three stages. Stage one is concept and planning, that's all of the green section. Stage two is execution, that's all of the yellow section. And stage three is completion, which is the blue section here. So each section or stage has a number, stage one, two, and three. That helps us number our tasks. The second part of numbering our tasks is then allocating numbers to each individual task. So if you have a look at this first task here, talk to our client and work out the requirements. So this is task one. That one, the first one, comes from stage one and then it's task one within stage one. The second one, select the area of the yard, is task two within stage one. Work out the best size for the coop, task three within stage one and so on. So if you move on to the yellow section, you'll notice it then becomes Stage 2, task 1, stage 2, task 2, stage 2, task 3, and so on and so forth as you go through. Then with the critical path, you start adding some time frames. So you've got all of your tasks in there. You'll notice that task 1.1 is dropped off the bottom for some reason. We've got 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 60 minutes, and so on. So every single activity in there has a time frame allocated to it. At this stage, they would be estimates. So you're estimating the time frame based on past experience, knowledge, recommendations, and your own research that you've done. From there, you identify the critical pathway. Now, remember, the critical pathway is the shortest amount of time in which you can do your project. So anything that's in series is always part of the critical path because you can't compress that part of the project anymore. It's one thing leads to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. 
Where there's parallel, such as the start of stage two, there's tasks 2.1 and 2.2. The first one's 15 minutes long, the second one's 30 minutes long. You can shift the 15 minute one around, but you can't compress 30 minutes. So you have to move your critical path to go through the 30 minute component. So task 2.1 is not part of the critical path, but 2.2 is. And the rest is a series, so it continues on all the way through there. So if you go through and add up all of the times in blue on the critical path, you'll find that it adds up to 3 hours and 55 minutes. So a reminder that the critical path is the pathway within a project where if it's delayed, the entire project will be delayed. So if any of those tasks run late, your entire project completion time will potentially slip. So as a quick review, the PERT stands for the Program or Project Evaluation Review Technique, which is a big word for a flowchart, and that's used to structure your project. Remember that it follows the project lifecycle, concept, planning, execution, and finalisation. The critical path is a pathway through the project where if a delay occurs, the entire project will potentially be delayed. Thank you for your time this week. Next week we are looking at understanding the work breakdown structure which is a scheduling tool. It also helps us estimate initial budgets and resource requirements. Don't forget that we've got our Project Management in Plain English conference from the 26th to the 28th of October. This includes three days of hands-on uh, workshop full of um, project activity nine expert guest speakers, a networking and social event on the first night. And following the conference, you can actually complete a certificate for what in project management practice for free. That price is included in the conference price. And remember that if you book by the 21st of July, you can save up to 50% with your early bird discount. So go to developmental.com.au to find out more about that. Thank you for your time and we'll see you next week.